Hello Space Cadets and welcome to Mueller Planetarium Astronomy at Home. This is Zach Thompson, Planetarium Coordinator at the University of Nebraska State Museum at Morrill Hall in Lincoln, Nebraska, wishing you all clear skies. Today we are going to explore the phases of the moon. And to do that, we're going to be using Stellarium, the free software for your computer or desktop Stellarium. You can look on the right of your screen near our moon buddy holding up the website Stellarium.org. And that's where you can go to download this and follow along with us if you'd like. I'm gonna make us go full screen here. So things are a little bit easier to see. And let's click on our moon and zoom right on up to it to get a wonderful view of our nearest celestial neighbor. There are eight phases of the moon. And before we dive right into those, it's important to keep in mind that the moon orbits the Earth. Whatever phase we see the moon in depends on where it is in its orbit around us and how much sunlight it's getting. So we start here with new moon. This is when the side of the moon that's facing the Earth is not lit up by the sun. However, the far side of the moon, the side we never see, is completely lit up. So you see the sun over here, it is still shining, but it's hitting the opposite part of the moon. Now there is no dark side of the moon. All parts of the moon get equal amounts of sunlight. But for the phases, it's how much sunlight is illuminating the side of the moon that we see. Now, after new moon, the moon starts to head towards full. We say it's waxing. And the first phase after new moon is a waxing crescent. After waxing crescent, we reach first quarter. And then, just a little bit more than first quarter, but not quite full moon, we call this waxing gibbous. This is a hunchback look of the moon. So this is just before we get to that full phase until finally the moon waxes towards full and there we have the moon that we usually imagine, a nice bright full moon. After full moon, as the moon starts to go back towards new, it begins to wane or there's less sunlight illuminating this near side of the moon for us. So we see less and less of it. Now this goes in reverse. So we have a waning gibbous. Then we have third quarter, waning crescent, until we're back here at new moon and the cycle repeats itself roughly uh, monthly. The way to remember this, a very fun way, is to think of the movie Karate Kid, the original 1980s Karate Kid, where they wax on, wax off. Similarly, the moon waxes on, waxes towards full, and then it wanes off towards new. The moon waxes on, wanes off. And so it's a fun way to keep that in mind, but no matter what phase the moon happens to be in, we encourage you to go outside and really look at the moon. See what phase it's in, what time of the day or evening are you looking at the moon, and what features can you see? Do you see a lot of craters? Do you see a lot of these smooth, dark planes called Maria? What can you see, and is it different from night to night, or whenever you happen to be seeing the moon? It's a great way to log your observations by simply using the moon itself. Now we're here at full moon, Gonna back us away a little bit and turn a couple of other things on. Don't worry, we're gonna get the sky nice and set up for us. But here at full moon, some interesting things can be observed. Before we dive too into that, let me just point out the fact that the moon, as it orbits the Earth, is not a perfect circle. It's actually elongated a little bit. We call it an ellipse. So what that means is that sometimes the moon is a little bit closer to the Earth and other times it's a little bit farther away. In this image here from our friends at NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, we've got this way to illustrate it for you. When the moon is slightly closer to the Earth, we call that perigee. When it's slightly farther away from us, we call that apogee. Between the two, there's not a whole lot of difference, but it is there. It is a measurable distance. When we talk about perigee or the moon closest to the Earth, sometimes you'll see the phrase pop up, there's the supermoon. And then when it's farther away from us, apogee, you might get the term micromoon associated with it all. Here's a good illustration of both moons, of the close and far moon. You know the big one as supermoon, the perigee, and the far one as micromoon, but the only thing about those names is they can be a little bit misleading. You might get the idea with a supermoon that the moon is humongous and it takes up a giant portion of the sky, and with the micromoon that it's way smaller, significantly smaller. 
There is a difference, but only we can see it when we compare them side by side, as you are looking at right here. The supermoon is bigger and brighter than the micro moon. Really, supermoon and micro moon exist because it's easier to remember than perigee or apogee. It sounds a little bit better, but just keep in mind, when you're going outside and just observing the sky normally when it's a full moon, you're not going to notice a whole lot of difference. The moon is pretty much always the same size in the sky. And you can really explore that with the full moon, the next time that you're outside and there happens to be a full moon. Now, why does the moon sometimes seem like it's bigger and smaller because sometimes we get that impression we start to think that the moon has changed sizes and I'll tell you there's a couple of reasons for that especially during full moon first of all when we have our full moon here realize it's been a month since the last time you saw a full moon a lot has happened in that month you've seen the moon at different phases or not at all so then the full moon, being as bright as it is and so visible in the sky, really grabs your attention more maybe than the other phases. So you tend to forget how big it looked in the sky. Another reason possibly is because when the full moon is rising in the sky, right here along the horizon, look what else is there. Trees, buildings, your school, your home, things that you already know the size of. And then you have the full moon near all those on the horizon as it's coming up. This point shows you how big the moon actually is. It's about a quarter of the size of the Earth, and as far as moons go, ours is pretty big. It only looks like it's getting smaller the higher it goes in the sky, because then you can't compare the size with anything other than the far distant stars, these little pinpoints of light. So what's happening a little bit here is a trick of the eye and a little bit of a psychological thing where you're remembering the moon in a different way. It's kind of a skewed memory. This might also be a surprise to you, but as you look at the moon right here, as we have it particularly pulled up in Stellarium, this is not the proper size of the moon. This is bigger than the moon appears in the sky. And I'll illustrate that for you right here. We have this menu pulled up. You can get into this if you'd like, but just to show you, the moon right here is five times larger than it appears in the sky. This is the proper size. Scaled, proper. And again, it comes down to how do you imagine the full moon? When's the last time you saw a full moon and really paid attention to it? You know, it's been a, more than a month or so, or about a month, and you tend to forget that size of the moon. But no matter what, just to help us out here, I'll bring it back to that exaggerated size. The moon is always about the same, but it's about the size of a blueberry if you hold it out at arm's length in the sky. That's all. Now, we don't always carry blueberries with us whenever we're out stargazing or looking at the moon. So here's something you can do at home to verify that the moon is the same size, no matter where it is in the sky. The next time you watch a full moon rising, try to have a nice flat horizon if you can. Then hold your thumb out at arm's length and cover that moon. A little while later, do the same thing when the moon is higher up in the sky, covering it with your thumb or your pinky or your finger. But we like to say thumb because it's a good way to remember a rule of thumb. No matter what though, your thumb, your finger is going to cover the moon the same way every time. It's, a, it's the way that you can get a good uh, reference of size and scale wherever the moon is in the sky, either at the horizon or higher up. But it just shows you how incredible the moon is and what it can do whenever you're looking at it, what it seems to be doing. But it's important to understand what is taking place. Is it a near moon, a far moon? Is it just your average full moon? Or besides the full moon, the phases that the moon is in. Because whenever you are noticing the moon, if you're doing your, your journal, your observations there, the moon has captivated people throughout human civilization. It's there, it's big, it's bright, it changes often. And it's incredible that we're able to watch those changes periodically and basically every single day or night or whenever you happen to see the moon. So that's why we encourage you. This is a great time to go out and really appreciate our nearest celestial neighbor, the moon. Again, we're using Stellarium. If you forgot it, you can go to that website right there on the right-hand portion of your screen just above our moon buddy there. We encourage you to get outside. Always observe whatever you can. Keep a journal of it. See what you can see. How does it change over time? If you have any questions, be sure to leave those in the comments section. We hope you enjoyed this Astronomy at Home installment. We look forward to seeing you next time. And remember, above all else, everybody, keep looking up.